Hi, welcome to Take Your Tinkercad Designs Further with Fusion 360 video. This is the third video of a series that explains how to use Tinkercad and Fusion 360 together. My name is Guillermo Melantoni and I'm the lead for Tinkercad. I'm also a product manager at Fusion 360 at Autodesk. I'm a former, former teacher on the design and architecture field and of course passionate about education and how we can inspire the next generation of creative minds with design thinking and creative problem solving. Today we'll cover what can be done with uh, Fusion 360 when you're coming from Tinkercad, when, when, when is the right time to do it, but also what are the things you can do, for example, adding details to a 3D design or rendering, animating, simulating, documenting, uh, fabricating, right? So any all the steps that you can do to, fo to follow to bring uh, a 3D design to life. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to access Fusion 360. So in the first case, uh, using Fusion 360 for detailing. Um, in this first example, what we want to do is refine a Tinkercad design. Uh, in this case, this is a quick basic model in Tinkercad, and then I took that, that controller into Fusion 360 for handling the smoothness of each part using fillets, uh, some chamfers, and then Halloween bodies. And, uh, and then, of, of course, you want to work with solids for all this to refine this design because we cannot do those operations on, on meshes. So that's why, why it's so important to do the send to fusion from Tinkercad because then we translate native Tinkercad geometry, if they are basic shapes, into native Fusion 360 geometry, which makes things absolutely much easier, right? So these operations don't really work on meshes. As you can see here, um, I'm rounding edges on on the um, on the model i am just just making the whole object not only nicer but for example also easier and more comfortable to grab which at the end of the day it's what we want is something that's more comfortable to use another scenario is using fusion 360 for rendering images you can use fusion 360 to create images what also we call rendering just really, really nice, really beautiful images you can use on a poster, you can impress everyone, you can just just tell your story better, right? So a couple of interesting things. I mean, any color you use in Tinkercad will be transferred into Fusion 360 and will become a material with that same color there. So for example, if you are using yellow on the micro bit for all the contacts, um, then once it gets into Fusion, you can just swap that material with copper, for example, and everything that was previously yellow on that material turns turns into copper. So it's very, very easy. And with just a couple of operations, you can then create really, really nice, really, really nice images. Um, rendering is the only one of, of the examples we're gonna see in which actually sending a mesh would not be very different. I will still probably try to send solids, um, but but if you want to send a mesh, you want to send it as OBJ because OBJ keeps the information of the colors and STL does not. Another scenario is using Fusion 360 for fabrication, for making, for printing or cutting, right? So um, in this case, as I was saying, making can mean many things to you, right? Could be 3D printing, which is probably the most uh, um, frequent case. In, in high schools mostly, but then you can also do it for laser cutting, for CNC. Uh, some scenarios in which you might want to send something to Fusion 360 for, for even for 3D printing, because you could say I can print from, from Tinkercad and that will be true with some of the services we, we link to. But um, many times you find people that say, oh, the curves on Tinkercad don't have enough resolution. Uh, I need to get a, a bigger resolution on Tinkercad. When you take an object from from Tinkercad into Vision 360 that has a curve. The good thing about this is that um, it it becomes a perfect curve inside Fusion 360, right? So even if you just do that, just to then hit 3D print uh, in Fusion 360, it still makes sense because you can control the resolution. Next scenario is using Fusion 360 for animations. And this is all about storytelling, right? So um, 
Because we all like things that, that move and you can be, tell a better story that, that way, right? So if you have components of all the things you did on Tinkercad, just, just work on the story, work on a narrative and help the students understand how to tell a story about the process. We, we all know that at the end of the day, we do care about what people create, but we care mostly about the, the path to get there, right? So the journey you, you, the students took to create something is sometimes as important or even more important than the final object because that's where you can you can just really explain design thinking and you can and students can understand okay I, I did all these steps I I learned from some steps that that implied some level of failure which again failure is not about failing is about just learning how what not to do in those cases and, and why these things happened and, and just get better at uh, at, at, at designing. So from here, you can export uh, animated GIFs or movies. You can create exploded views for documentation. And again, it's all about how you tell the story about what you just did. The fifth scenario has to do with simulation. And this is a very interesting one because simulation is probably too advanced for, for students or for most students, especially on, on high school. Um, because it, it requires a very deep knowledge of an understanding of materials and the forces that are critical to get the results you can trust, right? So you really need to understand how, many, how much is the tension that you add to a controller when you use your hands, for example, stuff like that. Simulation will always give you a result, but the result, if, if the input is not good, the result is not going to be good either. So, but still there's some simple things you can do. For example, stress analysis. Um, so, for example, again, what's the right amount of strength needed for each side of the controller? Let's say you say, okay, it's one pound or something like that. Uh, when you do the, the, the simulation, you will realize that some areas might get into, into red, for example, which means that they might break. Right? So if something might break, you might just want to find a way to prevent that, which might be adding more material, for example. Or, or adding extra support for some some part of that. So, and, and this is this is again a, a way to um, understand how your object, your design, will behave in real life. And for all of these, again, you need solids. Another reason, again, to to use solids. So again, stress simulation will tell you the areas in which your model might break um, based on the forces and the material strength. So you can maybe say, okay, I'll turn material. What if I print this with ABS um, instead of PLA or something like that? In each scenario, you will start getting different results. And this is a great opportunity, again, to talk about the importance of iterations in the design process, right? because based on the result, you can thicken some compromised parts and run the simulation again if needed. The last scenario is using Fusion 364 documentation. And this is a pretty interesting one because everybody still wants some level of documentation of, of the design. And even if many people in the past thought that um, with 3D models going directly into fabrication with machines, the documentation would be less relevant, it is still really something that everybody asks for. And uh, in, in, in our case, Fusion 360 has really, really good tools for, for documentation. It has really good drawing features, which come from AutoCAD, which is pretty much the quintessential tool for drafting, right? So um, another another scenario again for it's only solids can can be accepted on the on the Fusion 360 for drawings workspace. So this again a yet another reason to use Sent to Fusion and not use an export inside uh, from Tinkercad. And that also is a is the greatest value proposition about why to use Tinkercad and Fusion 360 together because if you want to take something from Tinkercad to Fusion 360 with any other application out there you need to export a mesh which is again as close as useless for many scenarios. Only with Fusion 360 we have the option to go from Tinkercad into Fusion 360 by using native geometry on both sides. So I want to talk about a couple of scenarios that I would like you to consider. Uh, first of all, there is definitely a scenario in which uh, people use Tinkercad and Fusion on the same project because you're still wanting to build confidence on the users, right? You want them to have something to get started in Fusion 360 as opposed to a completely empty space. Um, a new application with an empty canvas and new tools can be 
pretty terrifying, right? Even if Fusion 360 is is, is fairly intuitive in many in many aspects, but still, it's uh, it's it's very important for. Uh, we think it's very important if you are starting something on Tinkercad, which is where people are familiar with, and they can go really fast. Um, in, and then can take that information into Fusion and continue there. That's a really great way to to ease the transition from one to the other. Another scenario is that you not only have to see this as a transition, meaning that once you're done, you never use Tinkercad again. Sometimes it might be just faster and easier to use Tinkercad for some projects and then Fusion 360 for others. And that's okay, right? It's not you're regressing. I mean, going back to Tinkercad, when you know Fusion 360 is not a regression, right? It's just about using the right tool for the right task. And sometimes a simple one is the best option. And then you'll definitely have some students that understood the whole concept. They are really happy with what they're doing in Fusion 360 and they just don't need Tinkercad anymore. And that's, again, okay. Um, so people that are pursuing a path in fields like mechanical design, industrial design, machining, they may just want to start from scratch from with Fusion 360 once they're familiar with what they did. And, uh, and that's a great, those three scenarios work, all of them work well. There's no one better than the other. So just summarizing, some, in some cases you want to start something in Tinkercad and take it into Fusion 360 just to keep some familiarity and, uh, and, and make sure that, that, that students uh, don't, don't get too frustrated. Another scenario is just now you know both Right? You know Tinkercad well and you know Fusion 360 and you're growing into your knowledge of Fusion 360. And there are two scenarios there. One of them is, okay, I, I know so much of both that I know when to use each of them. And, uh, and the other one is, I know both, but I really, really, really think I transcended what I can do in Tinkercad and I'm going to do everything from now on in Fusion 360. All those scenarios are all great. So how do you get Fusion 360 for students who are at least 13 years old? It's accessible on Windows or Mac computers and also on Chromebooks. First, create an Autodesk ID if you're a teacher and then ask students to create their own Autodesk IDs. Then go to the Autodesk Education page and verify your status as a teacher in a recognized institution. Assign Fusion 360 to a list of up to 125 of your students. Then the students should be all set to log in you can also add them to your Fusion 360 Hub so that you can monitor their activities. A quick summary. We were taking a look at different ways to use Fusion 360 when you're coming from Tinkercad for operations like refining the model, for documenting, for rendering, for animating, for simulating, uh, for fabrication. And uh, what are the, some, some of the steps you need to do? Thank you very much.